Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video where today I'm going to be having a look at how iRacing Season 4 balance performance stacks up with the now 5 GTE cars to see if they've gotten more or less competitive in this new build. To achieve this, I have run several tests, both before the most recent build and also after the Season 4 build, so we can do a proper back-to-back -back comparison of how the balance performance has shifted, and also to include iRacing's newest edition, the Chevrolet Corvette C8R GTE, to see where it ends up in the pecking order before the new season begins in a week's time. Attempting to cover all the bases, I've included four special tests. The first of which is a high speed run for the cars at Talladega Speedway where the cars will use baseline setups but with minimum rear wing to get a general idea of which car can go fastest in a straight line. In the patch notes the vehicles were stated to have a new aerodynamic model so we'll find out if the cars are faster or slower than ever before. To follow on with this in my second test I've taken all the cars to the Sonoma drag strip and simulated a rolling start. This will be an excellent test for the acceleration of the cars to see which of them has the grunt to get up to speed quicker than the rest. Thirdly, of course, I took the cars around a circuit to get an idea of the cars outright lap speed. I've done these lap times off of the cars optimal sector times so we can break it down further and really try and get an idea of which car produces the goods in which area. For this test I am not on baseline and am instead using a universal setup concept for these cars. If one car uses 4.5 degrees of front camber, so will the others, and if one car uses max wing, so will the other four. Throughout all these tests, I am also monitoring the car's fuel consumption because we all know fuel strategy is a massive part in GT racing, so I want to make sure we knew which car was the least thirsty in several different conditions. So they are the four tests I'll be including in today's video, but before we begin, if you do enjoy, be sure to hit the subscribe button and also join the discussion in my Discord. Link to everything is down in the description below, but without further ado, let's get into it. So, test number one, we go to the United States of America, to the high banks at Talladega Speedway to get an idea of the top speed of these GTE cars. And right off the bat, it's clear to see that GTEs are now considerably faster than ever before. In both builds that I tested, the cars run the baseline setup which included the gear ratios. However, I did move the rear wing to the lowest possible setting to simulate a Le Mans style configuration. In Season 3, the cars all ran pretty comfortably under the rev limiter, but such is the speed increase of these new cars in the Season 4 build, two of the five cars ended up tagging the red line. The Porsche 991 RSR was the first car out of the pits and improved over 6km an hour from the Season 3 build for the car's peak speed. The current baseline was touching the limiter as well, so with optimised gear ratios that number could be far higher as we see reflected with the other 4 GTE cars. The 4 GTE was the biggest improver from build to build for straight line speed, now coming in at over 12.4km an hour faster than in the Season 3 build. When comparing all the cars together though, it is still the Ferrari 488 GTE that comes out on top though, as has been a common trend throughout the years. The BMW M8 GTE was narrowly the quickest car in Season 3, but in the new build drops all the way down to 4th place. The Corvette of course only has data for Season 4 being a new release, but that did not disappoint with a rapid speed averaging 290.5km an hour and hitting a peak speed of 296.1 to go second fastest within touching distance of the Ferrari. Next up, we head to Sonoma Raceway to their drag strip to pin the GTE cars against one another in a rolling start simulation. To achieve this, I get all the cars to roll up to the start line at the drag strip on the pit limiter, and then once they've reached the yellow line, I turn the limiter off and see what the cars are capable of. I recorded each car's run in 60 frames per second and then carefully processed the video with time codes to ensure accurate timing from start to finish because of course iRacing does not automatically measure drag strip times. From here, I convert the time codes into seconds to give us an accurate timing system for this test. In Season 3, the fastest car in this test was the BMW with a time of 8.8 .8 seconds, an entire tenth of a second clear off the chase pack. In Season 4 though, with this new build, I have to give a massive well done to iRacing because it is much, much closer. The Ferrari does manage back-to-back -back victories in the first of our two tests, 
but by an incredibly narrow margin of just one hundredth of a second over the Ford and three hundredths of a second over the BMW and Corvette. The Porsche is lagging behind once again though a tenth and a half slower to completely this pass down the drag strip and ending up in fifth place of the five cars. The Porsche appeared to struggle at this point but could it maybe turn around its fortunes on the track in our lap time challenge. Test number three is arguably the one everyone was waiting for. We're pinning all five cars against one another at Barber Motorsports Park to see how the cars perform against one another over an entire lap time. With the aero updates planned for these cars, I thought Barber would be an excellent circuit due to some very flowing sections with plenty of change of direction, as well as two incredibly long corners to see how the cars grip up with the new tyre model under high loads. Each car was given two five lap runs and these laps would then be broken down to optimal sector times to give us our running order. Season 3's balance performance was a little disappointing with both the Ford and BMW being clear runaways for lap speed across the entire season. The Ford backed this up in my Season 3 tests, recording a time of 18.3, a tenth faster than the BMW, but then a gap of three tenths back to the Porsche and six tenths to the Ferrari. It was time to dig in and see how Season 4's balance performance on a circuit compared. To set the benchmark, we went with the Porsche, which has struggled in the earlier two tests. The Porsche did feel quite nice around the Barber circuit and was only unsettled by large curb strikes, but it set our benchmark at a respectable 118.7 seconds, which was interestingly a tenth slower than the car went in Season 3. Next up, it was time for the Prancing Horse. While the car does feel very nice to drive around the circuit, I found it a little challenging to extract lap time out of, especially in the long winding sectors of the lap, and the Ferrari found itself down at the first two sector splits compared to the Porsche. The Ferrari always has been outstanding over curbs though, and it uses to its advantage to beat out the Porsche in sector 3, but again fell away in the fourth sector to record a 118.8, a tenth of a second slower than the Porsche managed. The Corvette would be car number 3 in our test and it laid down a speedy start to the lap in the long flowing corners to go almost a tenth of a second faster than the Porsche and closely match it through sectors 2 and 3. The Corvette felt incredible on the brakes compared to the other two cars and its initial turn in was excellent which I believe played a big part in how the car achieves its overall lap speed. It was good enough for the Corvette to go fastest of the three cars that had run so far and prove that this car will be a strong contender in its debut season. Car number 4 was the Ford GTE and this was the car that went quickest in the season 3 build around Barber so there were high hopes for the blue oval. The Ford, a little like the Corvette, loves the long flowing corners and can bite into the corner better than the likes of the Porsche and Ferrari. Curb strikes were a bit of an issue for the Ford, but overall it is still a lovely car to drive around a circuit like this. It was very close between the two, but a purple sector in Sector 4 would be the deciding factor that put the Ford GTE on the top of the timesheets by two hundredths over the Corvette. Only one car was left, and that was the BMW M8 GTE. The BMW is just the GTE that keeps on performing and doesn't particularly have any weaknesses, and this is showcased once again. Across the four sectors at Barber Motorsports Park, the BMW did not set a single purple sector. However, with its impressive grip and traction, the big boy would go on to take the fastest lap of any of the GTE cars with a 118.6, half a tenth faster than the Ford and Corvette. A big well done to iRacing does have to be said here though, with all five cars fitting within just two tenths of a second. That is no easy feat. As I mentioned earlier throughout these tests, I have been monitoring the fuel consumption of these cars and as a whole, in Season 4, the cars are using a lot less fuel than they once did thanks to the new aero model. This means that potentially getting yourself to the hour mark is no longer such a fuel save effort and can be done with a higher pace over the stint now. But when it comes to which car is the most fuel efficient, we do get some slightly exciting results. When it came to the high banks of Talladega with the cars running on the high RPM range for an extended amount of time, the Corvette proved to be the significant outlier of the field as it burned just 1.82% of its fuel over the entire lap. This ended up being 0.1 higher than the Ferrari which came in at second at Talladega, along with the Ford and BMW, while the Porsche again comes a distant 5th place. 
At Barber Motorsports Park, the order shuffled around again though, with the Ford being the most fuel efficient at 1.97% by just 0.01 over the BMW. The Corvette wasn't an outlier anymore at Barber, only recording the third best economy, while the Ferrari beat out the Porsche, which was some 0.13 worse off than the best cars. So, where does this leave us on the state of the Season 4 GTE balance of performance? Sadly, if you are a Porsche fan, you might want to race GT4 or the Cup cars instead this season, with the Porsche scoring just 5 points in these tests. Its straight line speed in the test wasn't quite there, and its acceleration was no better, and all the while, it remains exceptionally thirsty. Tied for third place in our leaderboard goes to the Ferrari and the BMW M8 GTE. While the BMW reigned supreme around Barber for lap times, its straight line speed did let it down in this particular challenge, which will play a big part around a circuit like Le Mans or the Daytona Road Course, but by all means a phenomenal car that is a very safe choice for anybody. When it does come to a circuit like Le Mans or Daytona Road Course, maybe the Ferrari 488 GTE should be your choice. The Ferrari started very strong with victories in both the straight line speed and acceleration tests. Maybe it's an illegal engine in the car, maybe it's not. All I know is the Ferrari is once again the king of the straights in GTE. In second place in this particular challenge is the new kid on the block. The Chevrolet Corvette CA car showed solid speed at Talladega, almost rivaling the Ferrari, and its fuel economy total ended up the best of the five GTE cars as well. The Corvette is a very safe and very stable car to drive, and I think for those wanting to race GT for the very first time, this car could be a perfect beginner. But in the four round tournament, the car that came out on top at the end of it all was the Ford GTE. The Ford can be a handful to drive at the best of times, but three second places in these tests and a third shows this car, while may not be the absolute fastest in any particular scenario, it is a very, very good all-rounder in the current BOP. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below, as I'll have plenty more videos coming in the coming days of all the Season 4 content. But until next time, I'll see you later guys. Peace.